Hello guys, this is Prof and welcome to Test Foundation. Once again, it's my pleasure to share with you. This is another episode of our programming with Modern C++. And uh, in this tutorial, I'm going to talk about floating point fundamental data types. Now, this is a continuation of the previous episode. So please, if you haven't watched it, go and watch it for better understanding. This is the outline of today's presentation. Uh, the emphasis is on uh, floating point data types under which I'll be talking about the floating point literals, how to perform calculations with floating points, uh, the limitations of floating point values and certain uh, invalid floating point results. All right, so let's start by looking at the floating point numbers. In the previous episode, I talked about integers we learned what they are and how to perform calculations with them now integers belongs to the set of real numbers okay and uh, the rest of the sets of real numbers that are non-integers are actually floating point numbers now with floating point numbers the emphasis is on the size and the precision so when we talk of floating point numbers two things of interest the size that is the range of uh the, the range of values it can represent and not just that but also how precise the accuracy the precision of the numbers that can be represented uh, and uh, when we talk of precision here it has to do with the number of significant digits in the mantisa so if you take a typical floating point number let's say minus 0 0.35790 times 10 is the power minus uh, we, ha we have the sign of the mantisa okay then the numbers after the decimal point that correspond to uh, that that is what we call the mantisa okay then uh, like we said the floating point has a decimal point in it then we have a base which is usually base 10 and uh, in c++ we'll be representing this 10 by an e then we have the exponent okay then we have the sign of the exponent so this is the basic part of every uh, uh floating point number is that okay so with floating point number much of the emphasis is on how many decimal places okay significant uh number of digits that can be represented after the decimal point now c provides three different data types for representing floating point numbers uh, we have floats, double and long double. Floats are used for single floating point precision and they usually occupy 32 bits in, uh, of computer memory. We also have the double and uh, the double is also used for representing a double floating point precision. They have a 64 bit representation in memory. Then finally, the long double is used for double extended precision floating point values. Okay, they usually as, are expressed as a 128-bit value. Now, floats have the lowest number of digits in the mantisa, and the long double has the highest number of digits in the mantisa. So, unlike integers, you cannot actually use the signed and unsigned modifiers on floating point numbers. They are by default signed. And also, the range of numbers that uh, can be represented by each floating point type is determined by the range of the exponent. Unfortunately, the precision and range of values are not dictated by C++ standard. So it is the compiler that actually uh, determines the range and precision of the floating point types. However, C++ standard does guarantee that the type long double will provide a precision that is no less than the type double and the type double will provide a precision that is no less than the type float. So modern compilers and computer architectures actually use floating point numbers and arithmetic as specified by the IEEE standard. Now if you are interested in the standard you can pull it up from the internet and have a look at it. Typically Floats provides up to about seven decimal digits of precision, okay? And that's a mantisa of 23 bits. Double provides nearly 16 digits, and that's a 52-bit mantisa. And the long double provides 
about 18 to 19 digits of precision and that's about uh, 64 bit mantis okay with some major compilers however the long double has the same precision as the double and i'll be showing you that in code because i've realized that my compiler has that issue uh, when when i was talking about integers you realize that the long integer type and the int integer type all occupy four bytes memory one thing i've also realized is that although um the 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 long double and the double on my computer or with my compiler have different uh, memory sizes the the double is eight uh, yeah the double is eight and the long double is 16 the the precision is actually the same and now I, I will show you that in uh, a moment okay so this table actually summarizes the precisions that is the number of decimal digits that can have you can have so with floats you can have around seven decimal point with double around 15 or nearly 16 and uh, with the long double somewhere between 18 and 19 but like i said some compilers they have the same precision for double and the long double so let us look at examples in code first of all let us look at how to create floating point types okay so i have all the three types here float pi and i've assigned it the value uh double var one long double var two is that okay so you realize that it's the same way we we, we declared and initialized integers the only thing that is changing is that right now we are using numbers that have decimal point in them is that okay so if i run this we should see this output on the screen so let's quickly do that okay so you can see that we have pi plus 3.142 and if we were to be using integers you know that all the, the floating point sites would have been truncated okay so you can see this representation so this is how you create floating point numbers too okay now another example that i want us to look at is the size of the floating point numbers so i put together this uh, this piece of code now uh, there are some things that you may not know but let me quickly explain them okay so we have std actually i don't have to declare std because i've already done the global declaration okay good so see how the set uh, precision so here i'm telling see how that it should now allow it should now um display decimal point okay precision up to about 100 is that okay and uh, actually i don't need this show point because by default decimal point will be shown is that okay so at first i first i have um, uh, actually let me change this to double type okay and the uh, long double so we are going to check the sizes okay per my compiler what sizes uh, my compiler associates with these data types is that okay after which we will look at um how 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 many uh, decimal places the different uh, floating point types can store up to is that okay so then we will we'll test in in this uh, aspect too okay so let us run this code and see all right so you realize that float type has four bytes the double type has eight bytes and the long double has 16 bytes now if i hit enter to continue the rest of the code now look at it you realize that the floating point uh, the float type actually got up to 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 16 17 18 19 20 20 and 22 up to 22 that that's that's interesting that's quite interesting and uh, i totally have no idea why that is happening so if you guys know what is happening here you can drop a comment in the box i would also like to learn from you okay but then look at it you realize that my double and long double they have the same in fact i've done several experiments uh to try to find out whether there is a point where the double the long double actually takes more than the double trust me it is always the same it's always turned out the same so that confirms what i said in the presentation that for some compilers the long double and the double have the same precision now uh, remember the emphasis is on precision not the the, um, the size in memory so yes 
my compiler assigns system bytes to long double type and 8 bit however my long double and uh, double have the same precision and trust me i have tested this to the limits that i know okay so let us also look at it in the other way around so here you can see an e here and like i said e here represents 10 okay base 10 powers of 10 so if you want to write something like 1.2 times 10 is the power 5 in c plus plus you write it as 1.2 times uh 1.2 e5 is that okay so the e stands for 10 raised to the power okay so here you can see that as usual we have zeros for the flute is that okay so that means that if you are performing calculations with such a number you can't store this as flute realize that floating point is representing it as zero is that okay and the best that the double precision and long pre uh, long double precision can do is even up to uh how many decimal places yeah i think they go here okay and they uh, we have exponent minus 60 but again you realize that the double is exponent minus 60 long double is also exponent minus 60 okay so this confirms that my compiler assigns the same precision for both data types now when we talked about integer data types we also we talked about literals as uh, values that are written directly in the source code now these uh, numbers can also be floating points okay the main worry about such values is how do we tell their data type when we're dealing with integers we added some suffixes to tell which data type a particular uh, integer literal was we can also do the same thing with floating point numbers let's look at it Floating point literals, just like uh, integer literals, have suffixes. We have small f or capital F for flutes, okay? Then uh, capital L or small l for long double, okay? Any floating point literal that has no suffix is a double by default. A floating point literal includes either a decimal point or an exponent or both, okay? So if you look at uh, the numbers we saw previously, uh, uh, you realize that uh, there was some of them there was a decimal point and the the exponent the e sign is that okay so the way you identify a floating point number is that check for the presence of a decimal point or an exponent or both of them is that okay so if a number doesn't have any of these then that number is an integer the same computations and calculations that we did with integer literals can be done with floating point literals. Now, let's spend some time looking at this. Now, calculations in floating points is actually the same as calculations in integer values. So, at this point, if you haven't watched my tutorial on performing calculations with integers, please, I would advise you pause and check it out because I talked into the details on that. So, I'm not going to do that much details here, okay? Now, all the arithmetic operators, with the exception of the modulo or remainder operator, can be used the same way with flutes, okay? Even the postfix and prefix increment and decrement work with flutes too. The increment and decrement operators, however, only increases the whole number part of the floating point, so the mantisa is actually unaffected. Let, let me demonstrate this in code. First of all, Let's look at the, the literals that I was talking about. So I've created a size of with the following. So we have the same numbers, but I've changed the suffixes. Is that okay? And in the previous size of uh, program that I ran, you realize that uh, the long double had um, uh, 16 bytes, the double had 8 bytes, and then the floating points had 4 bytes. So if these things actually work, and remember we said that a, a floating point number without uh, a floating point literal without any surface is by default a double so if if these things actually work then size of should actually tell us the associated uh, memory used okay so let's run this program and see and you can see that 1.234 l is 16 bytes which means it represents what a long double 1.234 without any surface is 8 bytes which is that of uh, a double and then 1.234 f 
has four bytes which represents a fluid so guys this this suffixes actually work okay so anytime you are writing your code feel free to throw in some of them now let's also look at calculations with floating points so i have this simple calculation here that uh, computes the volume of pizza i actually stole this code from the book i'm using okay so first of all we define a constant double uh, floating point type called pi or value called pi and i hope you still remember what we use this const for so what we are trying to say is that the compiler should make sure this value does not change is that okay and of course the value of pi is constant so under no circumstance should it be changing in our program then we have double uh, a representing thickness z representing radius then the volume has been zero initialized and this is how we are computing the volume of the pizza is pi times z times z times a is that okay so finally we print the volume of the pizza is that so basically the same way we do integer uh, uh, calculations the same thing we do for floating point now down here i'm performing the pre increment and decrement operations okay and once it works you should know that it will also work for the post increment and decrement so let us run this and see okay so volume of pizza has been computed to be 50.8938 whatever okay now if i press enter see uh over here over here a was initialized to 0 0.2 is that okay now down here i said that plus plus a and we know plus plus a means that increment the value or increase the value of a by one before you use it in this expression so before the cl statement takes effect a is increased by one so you realize that it changes from 0 0.2 to 1.2 then on the next line i say before you perform this cl statement actually decrease the value of a by one so it decreases a by one and it goes back to the original value so the post increment and decrement operators work the only operator that does not work on float are the uh, is the modulo operator the rest of the operators the rest of the arithmetic operators they all work the same way like they do for integers okay now there are some limitations associated with um, floating point numbers is that okay and these things actually uh, lead to some common pitfalls and you have to be mindful of them when you are working with uh, floating point numbers now the first pitfall is that many decimal values don't convert exactly to binary floating point values okay so when when you 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 know no matter whatever data type you are using the numbers that you are using the computer is going to convert them to binary digits okay so there is actually binary representation for floating point numbers if you are interested to know more just do a simple google search and you get materials on it now the unfortunate thing is that the way uh, not all numbers are able to convert uh, convert exactly to binary floating point values is that okay so when you are performing calculations with uh, floating point numbers you have little 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 errors and uh, by the time you are done with the calculations these errors will compound to form a larger one so when you are performing uh, calculations with floating point uh, use a better precision as possible is that okay so as to reduce uh, the, these kind of errors the second pitfall is that if you take the difference between two values of type float that differ in the seat significant digit you will produce a result that will have only one or two digits of accuracy okay some people call this phenomenon catastrophic cancellation the third pitfall is this when you are working with values that differ by several orders of magnitude this can also lead to errors now an elementary example of this is adding two values stored as type float with seven digits of precision where one value is uh, about 10 raised to the power eight in fact sorry for that this is supposed to be 10 is the power 8 times larger than the other 
text is that okay now you can add the smaller value to the larger one as many times as you like and the larger one will actually not change okay so these are things that affect computations with um, floating point numbers so you should actually take notice of them now the last thing i want us to look at is invalid floating point results in c standard and mathematics the result of division by zero is always undefined nevertheless floating point operations in most computers are actually implemented according to the ieee 754 standard okay which is also known as the iec 559 so in practice compilers generally behave quite similarly when dividing floating point numbers by zero let's look at this the iee floating point standard defines special values having a binary mantissa of all zeros an exponent of all ones to represent positive infinity or negative infinity depending on the sign okay so when you divide a positive non-zero value by zero the result will be positive infinity and when you divide a negative value by zero the result will be negative infinity now another special floating point value defined by this standard is called the not a number which is uh, mostly abbreviated as NAN. Now this represents a result that isn't mathematically defined such as um, uh, dividing zero by zero or infinity by infinity is that okay any operation in which either or both operands are none will also result in a none okay so nan now once an operation results in a positive or negative infinity this will pollute all subsequent operations in which it participates as well is that okay so this is a very simple table illustrating the various ways to trigger this result so if you have any positive or negative value divided by zero the result will be infinity when you have positive or negative infinity and you add it you add or subtract any value you end up with infinity the same way if you multiply you end up with infinity if you divide you end up with infinity so these are the various ways to generate or to get an infinity uh, response the other way is how to generate the not a number and the first one is dividing zero by zero dividing infinity by infinity subtracting infinity from infinity multiplying infinity by zero all these are examples that will trigger and not a number floating point results okay this brings us to the end of our tutorials on uh, floating point data types now in the next tutorial i'm going to talk about functions okay now as i always say please don't fall prey to shortcuts learning programming requires you to spend time to obey the process spend time to understand the basics don't be in a rush if you go in rashly you will end up not knowing anything is that okay remember follow the process take your time to understand the language that you are using you are as good as how best you can use your tools now i want to express my gratitude to our partners and sponsors say tech designs and build smart agricultural machinery suited for african conditions and use they also provide fabrication training and computer aided design services to manufacturing industry Syriatech Technologies is an electronic component retail shop at China House Adum Kumase. So you can contact them for all your electronic components, including Arduino kit and sensors of all kinds. Teskin Enterprise is the number one distributor of electronic components, electrical components, and hardware. You can locate them at HM4 Market Kumase. Call them for all your electronics and hardware needs from analog to digital devices. Electronics deal in smart electronic system development, software and web apps, IoT system design, project and research, and IT training. You can contact us for your next multi million dollar project. If you want to be a sponsor or partner of this program, please call us on the numbers displayed on your screen. 
and we will be happy to sit down with you. You can also donate in cash or in kind to support our training. We actually need a good camera and sound system for our video recordings and uh, I'm planning on starting an electronic session and I will need these tools for better uh, video recordings, okay? Your support will be very appreciated. You can Momo us any amount using the Momo account on the screen, okay? From 5 cities to 500 billion Ghana cities or dollars, everything would be welcome. Now remember, it will be in that so help us make Africa tech literate. Once again, thanks for watching this tutorial. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe to this channel. We want to know how we can make this training better for you. So let us hear from you by posting a comment in the comment box below. Alright, I am Professor and this is Tech Foundation.